I want to quickly do a very few second poem. My mother wrote this. She's 93, just discovered she could write poetry. Body beautiful. Poems are a jumbling from the right side of my brain. It keeps me up. I'm tired. It sure is such a strain. Shall I write about the wetness slanted spatter on the pane? Oh no, it's now coming down in buckets. That noise, it is my bane. I'll just dwell upon the glamour of the dancing that I saw, performed by the ballet school of which presentation I'm in awe. The beauty of the human form from toddlers through the teens. I sit up in trance. There's no flaw that I have seen. I yawn and eyelids flutter. I no longer feel so taxed. The image of those dancers makes me so much more relaxed by Ruth Baskin. And this is called um, the No Bully Rap Song. I do it in my anti-bullying uh, concerts for children, but bullying is a problem with adults as well, where we bully and we're often bullied. And so I just decided I would do this one. Once upon a time, there were some really great kids, but they were made fun of no matter what they did. There was Rosa, Shamis, Mohammed, and David. And the kids over there called them names that they hated. But these great kids, they knew just what to do. They said, let's get together and we'll see this through. So they walked right up, looked those kids in the eyes, and said, we have some ideas on how to get along. So listen up, you guys, because we think you forgot that. I've got feelings, you've got feelings, everybody's got them too. Let's find some ways to make things better with the words we say and what we do. Respect yourself, respect each other, try to get along. Come and join the other side, it's the no bully, no teasing no gossip song cause being a bully or being a tease don't be that way please oh please cause it makes for mad feelings sad as can be and it drags our whole world down can't you see that a person can only take so much of mean words or angry touch some people might be different they might not fit in but teasing them that's a no win and the nicer you are to yourself, the less you'll pick on somebody else. And nobody, nobody, nobody can take away your hopes or your dreams. Keep those alive as hard as it seems. You might have money or you might be broke, but we're all the same with a thing called hope. Hopes are the dreams alive in your mind. Discover all you can be. That's a treasure. Only you have the power to find. And I've got feelings, you've got feelings, everybody's got them too. Let's find some ways to make things better with the words we say and what we do. Respect yourself, respect each other, try to get along. Come and join the other side, it's the no bully, no teasing. No gossip song, skit scat, did that, what do you think of that? Didn't that, didn't, this is the no bully rap. Bully, gossip, tease, not cool ways. Let's watch what we do, what we think, what we feel, and what we say. Oh yeah, skit scat, the no bully rap. This is from my book about criminal women called Daughters of Discordia. And uh, some of the women were very evil, and some were forced to, be, to do what they did. It was very, very fascinating research. And uh, this is about Anne Simpson. North Carolina, 1850. Although she was acquitted for the poisoning death of her husband, Anne Simpson was almost certainly guilty of that murder. And you'll understand why it turned out the way it did. The snow white dove, hapless, helpless, and forlorn. I prepared a tasty coffee for you, darling, 
You always said you liked it strong and sweet. Not like our border. That's why I told him to pass the cup along to you. I didn't say it sharply, did I? I clearly saw you would sicken and die when I read your tea leaves. Our old town witch said the same. He'll die within a week, she said. Then you will have the man you have always loved. Darling, you closed your eyes for three years, three years before you discovered us. And then you hit me. It made our marriage unreliable, like the chemical tests contaminated. I was the dirty vessel. Emotions, like the experts, are not completely trustworthy, you know. I flew to the jury's bosom. They weren't so dastardly as to hang a woman. They cherished me, protected me. Wasn't I a lady? Were they such fools to find me, a mere girl, a weeping widow, collapsed in her mother's arms, guilty? I was hapless, helpless, friendless and forlorn, they said. Yes, I had been skittish, perhaps, a little selfish, somewhat indiscreet. Uh, your jealousy was unfounded. These things happen, as my attorney said, in other lands, darling, not in North Carolina. <laughs>
graciously. Those outstretched boughs, the scarlet berries speckling the snow, left a cinder burning in my heart, a secret that no one shall ever know. Now I am old, yet I still recall the night that rowan tree left an image here imprinted on my heart indelibly. And when I've scanned the long span of my life from then till now, I found nothing closer to the truth and nothing less than all God will allow. Thank you. Good morning. Is it morning? Or afternoon? afternoon? Good afternoon. I was comforted to hear people deciding on choices as I came in because I have been in a quandary about what to read you. But I'm going to start with one that I love, and I just call it Storm. A gray pall over all. The day is set to bleed its lethargy on our need. The bird call is sodden on the air, leaded weight, it hangs there, stifled, smothered the insect cry, waiting for the pour of the sky onto the earth. Mother Nature empties her cup, whether in blessing or in wrath, we are powerless to discern, yet we wonderingly yearn to know. Listen to the bird song. Hear the insect cry, peepers try, they tell us on the wing, in the air, crawling there, and we hear, laden with the heaviness of care, like the sodden, weighted, pregnant air, must also pour our blessing or our wrath upon the little patch of earth we've got. War and pain, Suffering and shame drip and pelt from us like driving rain, bringing life or bearing pain. Heavy, loaded with care, dripping from us everywhere. Each place we step, we leave impressions there. Joy or pain, we sow and tear. Black and darker grows the day. More and more we lose our way. Thunder, fog beset our gaze. The whole planet becomes glazed. Sky comes down to earth and stays heavy in our hours and days. Can we breathe this endless haze? Gasping, clutching at our ways, pain in lost song, healing gloom we inch along, no sight beyond the flight to be the source of our necessity. Sodden, heavy, pregnant air giving birth to what we do not dare conceive. Drops softly round us, tears we cannot cry, we leave us of the burden as we strive, gentle us into the earth, water us with new birth, clean the blindness of our thought, release us from the trap of naught, comfort us with peace and hope, wash fear away as we grope our way through, our comfort to the path we clear through all this pain, beautiful, blessed drops of rain. I have two short poems. Um, the first one, I was inspired by my uh, grandson several years ago, and uh, the title of it is Forgiven. I was sitting at the sandbox on one bright and sunny morn when James came out to join me, and so a new game was born. I was asked to tidy up and put some order in his box. So I promptly picked up all the toys and lined up all the rocks. He returned in just a moment with a look of great dismay. Why did you empty out my cups? They were for us to play. So sorry, James. I didn't know. What did you want to make? It's okay, Nana, I'm not mad. It was just a little mistake. 
And uh, the second poem I just wrote uh, two nights ago after uh, being with my uh, uh, lovely Russian neighbors. And so I, uh, I wrote this poem. The name of it is Bella and Ludmila. My new Russian neighbors are such a delight. We take lots of walks, and they're usually at night. The language is no barrier. We act out what we want to say. It's much more fun than talking. It feels like all we do is play. I love to see them coming. Their hugs are long and strong. With friends like these to walk with, I know I can't go wrong. Thank you. Uh, the Carpenter Poets of Jamaica Plain will be having their annual reading uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving in Jamaica Plain for those who are following us. Uh, this is uh, called Exile in Three Parts, Part One. My passport expired. I wasn't paying attention to it buried on a shelf for a year or two as if it were tired and craved convention and the change of self after all it had been through. Number two, signpost. As a signpost in a strange land, she once gave me a generous gift, a book of poetry, 50 poems by Pasternak, that unread stood vigil on my shelf, banked by other signs from other lands, leaning in colorful company, dust jackets singing softly songs to me, of hope and love and lost hope as I would pass. Then days through melted years would pass till one into the other's voice and white noise drowned. And my eyes, once drawn to varied light and form, were dulled in dust from a landscape dim yet known. And while some vol volumes slept and passed, others wept in joy or sorrow, yearnings and borrowings I remembered her summer song from a space beyond my ears and eyes as the cold wind brushed the panes with dry leaves. I then took her to my bed and in the evening lamplight read aloud. Number three, Lonesome Traveler. With the ends all tied while the bridges burn, as the same sad sun and tired moon turn their backs on me so far from home on a cosmic sea of empty rooms and crowded bars. I'm just a lonesome traveler in a wilderness of stars. I've long since known the price I'd pay as the ambush lies along my way. Do I wait them out, sleep on stone and slowly die alone in blistering rooms and empty bars? I'm just a lonesome traveler in a wilderness of stars. Now, I believe that the empty space where flies my soul does not erase, that I tried and gained, that I tried and failed, that I won and lost all the world the cost. To be born to wander is to set a lonesome sail. In the end, the means to the soul be true, to the same red hair and eyes of blue, that once watched me walk away from home to die alone in smoke-filled bars and slow fan rooms. I'm just a lonesome traveler in a wilderness of stars. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I work with military veterans. Last week we celebrated uh, Veterans Day. Um, this piece uh, had a couple of uh, hard words in it, words uh, in the vernacular form. I have changed them for this venue. Um, I don't think it will alter your perception of the piece um, very much. They were not gratuitous, but um, this piece is dedicated to Vietnam War veterans. Um, and uh, well, the military gave us snafu and fubar, and um, therefore uh, that type of language is uh, not strange to them. 
This piece is after Pablo Neruda's General Franco in Hell. <clears throat> to those who wage war while seated in armed chairs, you will be slim and fit dining daily on MREs, bushwhacking up the next hill and down that hill and back up that same hill and down that hill and up the same damn hill, carrying your fully loaded pack, your M16 and ammo, until it's your time again to haul the M60 and bandolier along with your fully loaded pack. You will be granted leisure time between barrages of exploding shells as you are digging in, digging out, digging in, digging out, digging in, digging out, to lounge on the shores of swamps and tend to the rot among your toes and in your crotch. You will swat those filthy flies that bite you and bite you and bite you until you know there's nowhere on your swollen skin left but there will be mud baths for those bites. You will sink in the dung holes that lie as village latrines sink so low, you'll feel your breathing muck in with that suction sucking you down. You will always have an entourage. Bloody bodies with protruding bones will wait for you Wait to be bagged and zipped. Wait to be stacked in piles. Wait to be loaded for evac. Wait with you, wait with you. And you will never sleep alone. You will wake with her smoky aura, incensing eternity, that village woman with her burned breasts, supine in her hut beside her charred child. I'm Dr. Nancy Rappaport. Suicide is a difficult topic to discuss, but one that needs open communication. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among 10 to 24-year-olds, and it's on the minds of far too many young people. A national survey of high school students discovered that one in seven said that they were seriously considering taking their own lives. Deaths from suicides are only part of the problem. Every year, some 150,000 youth receive emergency care for self-inflicted wounds. Suicide leaves family and friends shocked and confused with unanswered questions about what might have been done to avoid such tragedies. Research has allowed us to identify risk factors, warning signs, causes of suicide, and strategies for prevention. Visit the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention at AFSP.org to learn more.
I'm Dr. Kathy Phillips. And I'm Dr. Andrew Blum. Epilepsy is the third most common neurological disorder in the United States after Alzheimer's disease and stroke. It affects more than 3 million people with 200,000 new cases diagnosed each year. The condition is caused by a temporary disturbance in brain function resulting in various kinds of seizures. These seizures can produce involuntary movements, changes in awareness, altered behavior, or loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a major chronic medical condition and can affect a person's quality of life similar to arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. It can limit activity and cause pain, anxiety, or depression. It can also be life-threatening. Because epilepsy can also present non-medical challenges such as discrimination and social stigma, we urge you to learn more about this condition. To find out more about this disorder, including its symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, visit epilepsyfoundation.org. Whether it's infectious disease, severe weather, or a chemical spill, emergencies that threaten our public health can happen at any time. After the events of 9-11, the federal government established the Medical Reserve Corps to respond to emergencies. Today in the Commonwealth, 45 Corps units recruit and train both medical and non-medical volunteers. In addition, the Department of Public Health's MSAR program, or Massachusetts System for Advanced Registration, credentials and deploys healthcare professionals to respond in such emergencies. Now a new effort is underway to enhance emergency response by aligning the activities of both groups. Mass Response is designed to facilitate emergency medical response and promote local partnerships in planning and assistance. And you, health professionals and concerned citizens alike, can be part of this important effort. For more information on Mass Response and how to get involved, visit maresponse.org.